Good morning, K6! Woohoo! Now, let me tell you something very exciting. Today, in fact, it's so exciting that Mr. Hurd's going to do something he almost never, 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 never does. He's going to not have a story. No story today! No, 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 no. First time, I think. Well, why is he doing it? He's doing it because birds are fantastic and interesting, and we are going to do our wonder question today. No story because we have information instead. Now, I'm going to show you what Mr. Hurd and I have been working on. Hold on. got a lot of writing here and we've organized it according to topic. What part of the, the, the question we want to talk about first and then next and then next. It's organized. Now, are you ready? Because today is the day we're going to talk about Now, our question was, can a bird, if it really wanted to, fly to the moon? Now, we are going to talk about a lot of different kinds of birds, not particularly this one. This is the Canada Goose, who you see a lot. Now, they fly away and fly a lot, quite a long way, but not the furthest, and that is going to be important. Hold on. Okay, before we actually really get started, let's talk about this word, fly. What do we mean by fly? Now, some grown-ups will tell you that actually you cannot use the word fly unless you are moving through the air and there is no air in outer space. But that seems like no fun at all, so let's use the word like we normally do and say that it belongs to rocket ships as well. All right, some superstar K6 friends said no problem if a bird wants to go to the moon, you just put it on a rocket ship and off it goes. But that seems like cheating. All right, no, no, no. We mean fly like a bird with its wings, right? Okay, let's get going. Okay, we need to talk about how far away the moon actually is, because a lot of K6 friends said the moon is way too far away, and that is probably fair. Now, it is not like this, it is way over here. And actually, we have to show it even further because it is this number away. This one, 384,000. That is a very, very long way, but that is such a big number, it is hard to understand. So let's move on to see if we can have some help. All right, so this is a huge number and hard to understand. So let's think about if we use one of these, right? If you drove a car as fast as your grown-up should, now you would, how long would it take to get to the moon? It would take quite a long time. You would not get there until Christmas, all right? So that's quite a long way. Now, what if we, just for fun, we wanted to walk? That is completely ridiculous because it would take 96,000 years, which means essentially you would not make it. So do not try that. So now that we know a little bit about how very, very, very far it is from the Earth to the Moon, a gigantic amount, we can talk about birds. I'm sorry that it took so long to start talking about birds. This is the Arctic Dern. All right. How far can a bird actually fly? This guy flies the furthest of any bird. Every year it goes like this, all the way from here 
down to here, and all the way back again. Now, this is this far. Now, scientists have just figured out that this is not even right, because it actually flies like this and wastes a lot of time going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So how far does it actually fly? Not this far. It flies this far, 35,000 kilometers. That is a huge amount. Now, it also does not do it without stopping. Let's talk about that in a second. Let's go back. How many times would it take of each trip? It would take 11 times. So not very helpful. It can't go all the way to the moon. And of course, as I said, the other problem is that as it goes, it takes lots of little stops, which seems like cheating. So how far can a bird actually fly with no stops at all? All right, as we just said, along the way to the moon, there's nowhere to stop. So how far can a bird actually fly with no stops? Okay, this is the roof of Red Knot, and it is the record for being able to fly the furthest with absolutely no stops. They stay in the air the whole time. They can go a very long way from Alaska to New Zealand. How far is that? Is it 11,000 kilometers? That is a huge amount of distance. Can it go all the way to the moon in that distance? Absolutely not. It would take 33 trips before it actually got to the moon. So I'm sorry, Mr. Rufa, you cannot do it at all. Now, do I have another one? No, I don't. There we go, I forgot. If you look on his leg, it is very hard to see, but there's a little bit of orange on his leg in actually in two spots. What is that for? That is actually a little bit of a tag, a little thing that people will put on him. Hopefully he did not mind because that is how we follow where a bird went. Otherwise, it's hard to prove which bird is which because they look a lot alike. So we put these little tags on them. All right, all right, let's keep going to the next part, which I forget what it is. When I click the next one, I will remember. Ah, now I remember, this is the Swift. Okay, so if we think back to the other bird, yes, this one, it's impressive how far he can fly, and especially that he stays up in the air that long. Now, this is even more amazing. This guy may not go quite as far, but he stays in the air an incredibly long time. If he took off right now, he would not have to land until next Easter. That is amazing. But, all right, let's move on. Okay, that is enough for today. I am exhausted, I need another cup of coffee, and it is now about 6.30 in the morning. All right, so we have talked an awful lot today about birds flying in the air, and as many K6 superstars said, Mr. Hurd, Mr. Hurd, Mr. Hurd, out here is outer space, and out here there is no air, that will cause lots of problems, and that is what we will talk about next time. All right, see you later.